Hey everyone, today we're going to be making this image here, which is a wall of glass blocks with neon lighting behind it. Let's get into it. So you have your default cube here. Don't delete it. We're actually going to use that as the basis for our uh, glass blocks. So the default cube is a bit too big for what we need it for. So let's change the dimensions over here. Uh, I'm going to change that to 0.5 on all the dimensions. And I'm going to apply the scale. So hit Control A on your keyboard, apply the scale. Uh, next, we need to add some thickness to it. So if you look at a glass block uh, reference photo, you can see that the edges are kind of beveled. Uh, so we're going to recreate that with the solidify modifier. I'm going to go down and add one of those. And the settings that I'm going to use for that is a negative 0 0.04. Uh, and that's all we need for the solidify modifier. Uh, next, we're going to add a bevel modifier to kind of smooth out the edges. Right now it's very sharp, so I'm going to add a bevel modifier. And I'm going to reduce that to about 0 0.02 and give it four segments. And lastly, I'm going to shade it smooth. Great, so we got the basis of our glass blocks right here. Um, next, we need to make a material. All right, before we make a material, Let's switch renderers. So right now we are using Eevee. Let's make sure that we're using cycles. Um, the, the reason that we're using cycles is that it's much better for rendering class. Uh, because I'm using a GPU, I set mine to GPU compute as well. Great. Now to actually make the material, let's go into the shading tab on the top. And let's zoom into our cube and let's make the material. So by default, it applied um, a basic material. Uh, let's rename this to class and let's get rid of this principled shader because uh, we don't need this. So I'm going to hit X on my keyboard to get rid of that. And I'm going to do Shift A to add a glass material. So I'm going to plug that into the surface and this is what we get. Cool. Um, this is a bit too smooth uh, for what we're looking for. Uh, so let's add some, some wavy bumps to it. And the way that I'm going to do that is with a noise texture. So over in the nodes, I'm going to hit Shift A on my keyboard and search for noise. And I'm going to insert that there. And then I also need a bump node, so I'm going to search for that as well. Great. So I'm going to plug the factor of the noise texture into the height of the bump. And I'm going to take the normal from the bump into the normal of the glass shader. So let's preview what that looks like in rendered mode. Um, it looks a bit too intense, so let's reduce the strength of the bump to something like 0 0.05. And it's also a bit too small, so I'm going to reduce the scale to 3. And I'm going to bring down the roughness and maybe add some distortion to it. Maybe like 0.6 or 7. Yeah, there we go. And with that, we pretty much have our basic block. So now what we need to do is arrange them. Okay, so to arrange these cubes, I'm going to go back into the layout tab. And let's go back into the modifiers of our cube. Let's lapse this because we don't need it anymore. Um, so the way that we're going to add a bunch of these cubes is with the array modifier. So I'm going to go to add modifier, select array. And let's make 10 of these. So now we have 10 glass blocks. Um, let's add another array modifier because we want to build them upwards. So collapse that. Let's add an array modifier. And instead of doing it on the x-axis, we are going to move it up on the z-axis uh, by one unit. And let's make, let's say, 15 of these. Great. So now we have a glass block wall. Perfect. Now what we need to do is curve them. Um, the way that I'm going to do that is with the curve modifier. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we need an actual curve uh, to curve these around. So I'm going to do Shift A on my keyboard and go into Curve and select Circle. I'm going to scale that by 3, so S on my keyboard, 3, and Enter. Go back to my glass blocks. Let's add the curve modifier. So under deform, you have this curve. 
And let's select this curve that we just made, which is this Bezier circle. And you can see the glass blocks uh, deform to this curve. So now that we have our glass blocks arranged, let's um, actually view what our camera is doing and let's kind of set it up how we want it. Uh, so right now where this is our default camera, it's not really cropped how we'd like. So what we're going to do first is um, change some of the output property. So I want this to be a square image. Uh, and you can change the resolution to be anything that you'd like. I'm going to do 1200 by 1200. This will give us a square aspect ratio. Uh, the next thing I want to do is reposition the camera. So I'll select it over here. And with G on the keyboard, you can kind of move it around. Just kind of center it wherever you'd like. And lastly, I'm going to change the focal length of my camera. And basically what this does is kind of zooms in and out for you. Um, and this... Uh, with a longer focal length, this will kind of help flatten the image. Um, it's really useful for more textural kind of renders. So I'm going to set mine to 70, which gives us a nice crop here. Um, and that's it. Okay, now let's talk about lighting. So the way that I'm going to light this scene is not exactly traditional. Um, I'm not going to be using lamps or HDRIs, uh, which is what I would traditionally use. Uh, but I'm actually going to use an image to light this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to unsplash.com. So unsplash is a royalty free stock image website uh, where you can use these images for free. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for an image to light our scene with. So I'm going to search for neon. And I'm actually going to end up using this first image here. Um, but this is an opportunity to kind of make this your own. The images that you want to be looking for are images that are mostly covered with color. You don't want something that has too much uh, dark space, like some of these uh, neon images here. What you're going to be looking for is an image like this, has a lot of color. Something like this could work. Mm. This could be interesting. Uh, so if you want, choose a different image. I'm going to choose this first one on the top left, and I'm going to hit the download free button right here. And what we're going to do next is import that into Blender. So there are a couple ways to import uh, images into Blender. The way that I'm going to do it is using the built-in add-on called Images as Planes. So before we can use that, we have to enable it. So go up to your Edit menu, go into Preferences. Um, in your Add-ons tab, search for Images. And click the checkbox next to Import Images as Planes. Great. Now, once you have that, now you can import that image. So hit Shift-A on your keyboard, go under Image, Images as Planes, and then off screen, I'm going to just select the image uh, wherever you download that image and double click on it. Um, so once you do that, you'll have this image here. And now if you go into Render View, you can kind of see it, um, but it's a little bit too small for our purposes. Um, so let's scale it up. And maybe move it back behind the blocks, scale up a bit more. And nice, now we're getting closer. Um, so next, I want to actually get rid of some of the elements that started with this file. So we don't need this point lamp anymore, so I'm going to delete that. We don't need this floor anymore either, or this plane. I'm going to delete that too. Um, and so now if you go into rendered view, um, it's complete darkness. You can't see anything. Uh, so let's fix that. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to select the image and we're going to go back into the shading tab. And we are going to uh, select the material that this plane has. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the color of this image and move it into the emission node for the material. Basically, what this will do is it will make the image now emit light. So you can preview that by going into rendered view. And if you go into camera view, now we're starting to get pretty close to what we're looking for. The only other thing that I might, you might want to change is the world color. So if you go on the right side over in your, your world settings, um, you might have this gray or black color here. You might want to change this to maybe like a dark blue or something. And what that will do is sort of change the color that some of the blocks are reflecting. So if you change it to like green, you can see it kind of reflecting there. Um, but I think blue will work with this color scheme the best or something 
Something like a blue or purple. Perfect. Let's render that out. Awesome. So this is looking really good. There are a couple final touches that we might want to add, and I will show you. You could stop here if you want. Um, there's a couple last settings that I'm going to play with. So for the finishing touches, um, there's a couple settings that I just want to change. One is in the color management. So under your render properties, under color management, you want to change the look to high contrast. Basically, that will do is just kind of boost the colors a little bit, uh, make it a little, little nicer. Um, the other thing that I want to do is maybe add some depth of field. Um, so to do that, first, what I'm going to do is create an empty. So if you do Shift A, Empty, Plane Axes, and go into Top View. So hit 7 on your numpad, or use the tilde key, Top, and move this empty uh, towards the front of the glass blocks. Then kind of move it down, and then move the empty a little bit up in front of your camera. And basically what you're doing is you're creating the point where the camera should be focused. So I'm going to put it right here. Great. Now I'm going to go and select my camera and go into my camera settings and hit depth of field and check this off. So with the focus object, I'm going to select the empty. And then I'm also going to change some of these settings. So for the depth of field, I'm going to reduce the f-stop to maybe something like 1. And we'll increase the blades. Let's see what that does. Uh, so I might have to give a full render to see the effect here. So when you render that out, you can kind of see that um, Around the left side of this render, it's a little bit blurry, which um, is because of that depth of field. Um, you can make it more intense by reducing um, this f-stop value. I think this looks pretty nice as is, and adds a little bit of realism to it. And that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something today. This is the first tutorial that I've ever made, so if you have any feedback or topics that you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you in the next one.